Hey, my name is Reed Bailey. And we really left you at a cliffhanger at the end of analysis of variance part three, and which we hope to resolve here in part four, focused on postdoc tests. Now, this is part of a series of statistics videos where we really aim at knowing what test to use when. We're assuming you've already had a traditional statistics course and are familiar with the different tests. You need help figuring out when to use them and how to use them well. In this case, we're focusing on analysis of variance. We've worked all the way down through the different different types of t-tests. And like I've said, this set of videos is about analysis of variance. Our example was about an opera company that had tried three different approaches to solicit donations. They had 24 potential sponsors, and they split them up into three groups of eight potential sponsors each. The question here is, do the different fundraising approaches lead to different dollar amounts committed by the sponsors? Well, we ran the analysis of variance, and you've seen all about this table in prior videos. The p-value is tiny. So from here, we can reject the null hypothesis that the different fundraising approaches are equal. But where we were left off with is, how do we know which ones are different from the others? And this is where we have our good friend coming back to help us figure that out. Which approaches are different? Because we know at least one of these things is not like the other ones. So it turns out it's not Cookie Monster, but John Tukey, who's going to help us answer this question and determine which ones of these things are not like the others. Now, all of these different tests that help you figure out which ones of your levels are different from the others for analysis of variance are called post hoc tests. There are a whole bunch of them. They come with different strengths and weaknesses. We're using two keys because it's a versatile test. What two keys does is it runs a whole bunch of pairwise tests between each two levels of your independent variable. Now we told you not to do this due to alpha inflation, but that's where two keys comes in. It takes account for alpha inflation in its analysis. All right, so this is a common way for the results to be shown from Tukey's test. We have our three different approaches on the left, and we see that approach two, on average, gets about $1,737 is how much it raises. Approach one and three, approach one is around $1,300, and approach three is just shy of $1,200 that it raises. What two keys, the rails from two keys are shown over here with these letters. And means that do not share a letter are significantly different. Well, it looks like approach one and three share a letter. So those two cannot be considered different from each other. But approach one and two don't share a letter. And also approach three and two don't share a letter. So what we can say from this is that approach one is not equal to approach two, and that approach two is also not equal to approach three. Approach two is different from everything else. Uh, you cannot separate out approach one and three because they share a letter. Tukey's test is not shown that these two are on average collecting statistically different amounts of money. So another way that stat packages can show these results is as confidence intervals of the differences between approaches. So we'll see up here, this is the difference between approach two and one, the difference between approach three and one, and the difference between approach three and two. And what we're looking for here is, does this confidence interval cross over zero? If it's possible, if it's within the confidence interval that the difference between these two approaches is zero, then we can't say these two approaches are different from each other. So the same exact results just shown differently that we could say approach one and two are different from each other because their confidence interval doesn't include zero and approach three and two are different from each other because their confidence interval doesn't include zero. Same results, approach one doesn't equal approach two and approach two doesn't equal approach three. And that's because the confidence intervals, as we can see up here, don't include zero. Ah, so we come back this time to, let's call him Tukey Monster. At least one of these fundraising approaches is not like the other, but which one 
Ah, approach two is different from both one and three, but one and three are not different from each other in amount of money that they raise. Ah, you thought we were done, but in fact, there is a part five for analysis of variance, and it has to do with, does the data meet the assumptions that are necessary for running analysis of variance?